Hello and welcome to Book Break uh, for August for Greece Public Library. I am Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here. I moderate our Pints and Prose book discussion group and I'm joined as always by my very favorite reader, Claire. Hi everyone. I am Claire and I moderate as the Page Turns book group. So Excellent. And so today this is our one book break for August. Um, Claire and I are both taking a little bit of a step back for um, other projects this summer. Um, so we were just going to bring you a roundup of some of the stuff that we've been reading in between our many other activities. Yes, been doing a lot of reading, so. Nice. Um, do you want to kick us off, Claire? Oh, sure. I'm, I'll kick us off with my last book of the month, which was Razorblade Tears by S.A. Crosby, um, who is an author of color from Virginia. And um, I really like this one. It was kind of um, a little darker and edgier for me, more of an action than I normally read. Uh, so the premise of the story is there is a black father and a white father who joined forces on a crusade for revenge against the people that murdered their gay sons who were married to each other. Um, so Ike, the, the, the one father has been out of jail for 15 years um, and he hasn't so much as had a speeding ticket. He has his own business in landscaping, very respected member of the community. But um, as a black man, he knows when a policeman comes to the door, there's something to fear. Um, the last thing he expects to hear is that his son, Isaiah, has been murdered um, along with his white husband, Derek. Um, Isaiah was a gay black man in the American South, not um, an easy thing to be. And Ike has a lot of regrets over how he treated Isaiah. Um, he couldn't bring himself to attend his wedding. Um, he never was really there for him the way he should have been. And there was a lot of resentment. Um, Derek's father, Buddy Lee is also suffering. He barely spoke to his son in five years. Um, he was as ashamed of Derek for being gay as Derek was ashamed of his father for being a criminal. Um, but Buddy Lee is gonna take out some of his contacts in the underworld and try to find out what happened to his son. So despite the fact that Ike wants to stay on the straight and narrow, these two start, um, the graves of them are desecrated and that just sends Ike over the edge. Like he could have handled everything except for that. Um, so then, you know, you start on this revenge story and what happens to them. And of course it ends a little preposterously, you know, think to yourself, uh, like what's that Bruce Willis movie, Die Hard, you know, <laughs> that much action. Um, but I still could not stop reading and I really enjoyed it. And what I enjoyed most was just the regrets of the fathers with their sons, how they realized they, they really loved their sons. And they also had a daughter the, the two young men had adopted this daughter. Um, so just trying to renegotiate this family role. And um, so it's a little bit of humor, um, homophobia, <laughs> racial tension. I mean, it has it all. Um, and the dialogue between them felt very real to me. So yeah. Nice. Good read. That does sound good. Yeah. And a little bit different from the kind of stuff you usually talk about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Um, let's see. My first one, I guess I will talk about this one, is oops, The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby DeRay. Um, this is a Jenna's pick. Um, so it's not like I discovered this one. And actually, this book has gotten a fair amount of buzz. It came out um, early last year. Um, so it's not quite new anymore, but still fairly recent. Um, so this book is set in Nigeria. Our main character is Aduni. Um, she is a young teen um, growing up uh, very poor in rural Nigeria. And this is the story of her um, growth and education um, and striving for education. So we follow Adeni all the way from, and I don't wanna give away too much of the plot, but all the way from her rural village to um, 
Lagos, um, so big city life, um, but you really get a feeling, I really got a feeling for um, sort of the, the plight of the rural uneducated woman in Nigeria, which um, seems like not a great way to live. Mm -hmm. um, and there's actually portraits of um, some like different kinds of Nigerian women. So we have Aduni who is rural and poor. Um, we have uh, Big Mama who is her employer later on in the book, um, who is a self-made woman in Lagos. Um, so she is wealthy, but um, came up from um, humble roots. And um, there's another character who grew up very wealthy in Lagos. And you see kind of how those different experiences shaped the three different women. Um, this is a book written in dialect, um, which could be challenging. Um, I listened to this one on audio and I would actually highly recommend it on audio. Um, the narrator is Nigerian, um, so you get a very authentic feel for um, the accents and the rhythms of speech. Um, but even so, it still took a while <laughs> to kind of get into the rhythm of um, the writing. Um, but it's it's an excellent book. Um, the character, the main character, Aduni, is um, she is bright and hopeful, and um, you really root for her through the whole thing um, in her effort to find her louding voice, which is like her um, her way of expressing um, that she wants to have influence in the world. She wants to have a voice that people will listen to. That is her louding voice. So. Um, it was a very good book. There are some difficult passages. Um, there's a lot of ugliness in the book portrayed very honestly, um, but it's still also a very hopeful book. So oh, good. Yeah. We're reading that actually for As the Page Turns, I think in October. So I think that will be an excellent discussion book. I think there's a lot there to get into. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. My next one is Moon Lake by Joe R. Lansdale. This one was also a little grittier and it has a little bit of horror almost in it. Hmm. Um, so it it was uh, described as like an East Texas Gothic. So I was like, OK, hmm. sign me up, you know, mm -hmm. um, murder mystery kind of. It starts out the, with a quote, the moon is up, the water is high, dark souls walk the earth and cry by Jersey Fitzgerald. My name is Daniel Russell. I dream of dark water. And that's the way it begins. Uh -huh. um, so it's all about the secrets hidden in this town um, that all have to do with this East Texas lake, which is man-made. So Daniel Russell is our main protagonist character, and that's whose viewpoint we get. He was only 13 years old when his father tried to kill them both by plunging their car into Moon Lake. Um, he was saved by a young black woman who was fishing that night with her father, and um, she dove under, and as he was trying to get up, she brought him to shore. Um, she, he finds himself temporarily placed with that family, hmm. but this is East Texas in the 1960s, so this placement will not last forever. Um, even though Danny feels very comfortable with the Candles family and hmm. feels like the father figure was one of the best he's ever known. Um, so he's sent to live with an aunt that he met one time. Um, the mother's is a mystery as to where she is. Um, so he eventually, when he grows up, his aunt dies, he decides to return to the town and try to figure out what happened, what drove his father to this. And there is a twist because there, um, the lake has dried up and now there are bones found in the trunk of the car. So is his father a murderer? Did he murder his mother? Is something else going on? 
Um, and meanwhile, his mermaid that saved him is on the police force in the town. So mm -hmm. it's very much a tale of vengeance, trying to unwrap family mysteries. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a little bit of like a horror element to it. So I don't want to give too much away, but it kept me going. It was a little bizarre for me, <laughs> but I was so far into it. I had to kind of keep going at that point. Mm -hmm. So um, hmm. yeah. So a thriller mystery with a touch of horror thrown in. Well, that sounds right up my alley. Yeah. Yeah. You would probably <laughs> like it. So. All right. Adding that one to the list. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I have two genre fiction picks for my last two books. Um, so I will talk first about uh, my Western, which is Inland by Taya Obrecht. Um, so apparently uh, her first book, The Tiger's Wife, was like a big deal. Um, it is not one that I'm familiar with, but people seem to say a lot about it. But this one, so um, we have two um two stories that interweave um so we have one that's um it's what 1893 in the arizona territory so that's our our main story and that story centers around nora who is a mother of three boys um, between the ages of like eight and 18 um living in the arizona territory on a homestead um, her husband runs um, a small paper, a small press, um, and she works the farm, essentially. Um, it is a hard life, very hard life, and you get a lot of that um, just through sort of the detail of her day to day. Um, but the main sort of crux of Nora's story is that her husband has um, ridden out ostensibly on this one errand and he hasn't come back. So there's kind of a mystery about what happened to Nora's husband. Um, so she's dealing with that and then dealing with like um, cattle kings and people trying to nose around her land and um, secrets coming out with the neighbors and all of these things. So that's Nora's story. And then we also have the story of Lurie um, who came to the United States as a small child with his father from um, Turkey, were given to understand, um, and then was orphaned at about six. Um, so he sort of raised himself more or less um, attached to various people here and there, um, and eventually kind of fell in with a couple of outlaw brothers um, and became an outlaw himself. And while he is sort of on the run from the law, he becomes a cameleer in the West. So I actually have to look up and see if this is a true thing. Um, and I think that it must be, it's so bizarre. Um, but there was like a, a small herd of camels with drivers from the Middle East who were imported to the American West um, as an alternative to like mules and horses because they don't need as much water and they can carry more. So oh. it, yeah, it's like this bizarre historical fact, I guess. Um, and Lurie, there's a little bit of um, the supernatural, he, um, he can see ghosts or he, you know, claims to see ghosts and um, has some limited interaction with the spirits of the departed. Um, so we've got some mysticism there. Um, and then gradually his story and Nora start to converge. And it takes a really long time for you to figure out how these two people are going to intersect, like how this is all going to come together. Um, but it does. At like at the very end, they come together and you understand what's going on. Um, and it's really sad. Like this is a sad book. It's a hard book about like a really hard life and a hard period of history. Um, but the very, very end of this book, like the way that she wraps everything up, like we're literally talking like the last couple of pages 
um, was so lovely and well written and just tied everything together so beautifully that it took this probably from like a three star book for me to like a solid four like just bumped it right up the way it all kind of wraps up together so That's good to know yeah yeah so hang in there <laughs> um which seems again like I mean, if it's not your jam, it's not your jam. I would never advocate for people to like hang on to a book that they're not having a good time reading. Um, but I feel like it is nice to know that the end is very satisfying. At yeah. least it was for me. So. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. Well, my last one was one that I got on Goodreads, no, not Goodreads, NetGalley so as a, as a pre-pub. So I finally was guilted into reading it. Um, I had been waiting for Stacey Abrams, um, the Georgia, yeah, while Justice Sleeps. So she has written romances before. This was her mm -hmm. first like judicial court thriller. Um, I found it a little preposterous, but you know me. I have a very strong yeah. sense of, yeah, yeah, I'm not buying that. And this kind of like rung all my bells for that. Mm. But I mean, it, it's a kind of a fun ride, but I would compare it to like a Patterson or a Grisham. Mm -hmm. So if you like that kind of thing, um, then you'll probably love this book. Um, mm -hmm. the, the main storyline is there is a Supreme Court justice who is not in good health and he has a nurse. He knows that he's either being poisoned or something. Well, suddenly he's mm -hmm. in a coma, but he has put all this paperwork in place to have a power of attorney and it's his young law clerk, Avery Keene. Um, yeah, it's the legendary Justice Howard Wynn is the, is the man. So she is having a very difficult time because her mother is on drugs and um, frequently gets herself into escapades that Avery is worried that will come back and haunt her as her, she's trying to move ahead you know, on the court um, but her life is literally turned upside down by this because there's um, a very influential vote that is going to take place about this company that has like biomedical research going on. And right away, you know that something, something evil is afoot. Um, so she's kind of play like a cat and mouse game with other people who are trying to kill her, like the, the nurse that was taking care of the justice who was supposed to do him. And she ends up getting bumped off and it's just like a free for all, you know? <laughs> um, and of course he had a, an estranged son um, mm -hmm. who he had cut out of his life, but shows back up. And then he and Avery begin to work together on finding the clues and of course there's a little romance there and you know um so you find out a lot about washington you know scandals kind of how the government works i wouldn't say a lot of this is plausible but you know, <laughs> I, I i'm not a legal expert so um it is a lot of fun uh very suspenseful you know preposterous but i kept turning the pages so Nice. Yeah. Good beach read? Yeah, I'd say it's a good beach read. Nice. Nice. What I want to know is how Stacey Abrams has the time. Oh, I know. I know. I, the right I, books, be, yeah. you know, yeah. a political bigwig, you know, I, I just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, good for her. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Uh, my last one is, um, it is science fiction, but I'm actually going to say kind of science fiction light. And it is, um, it was also from my stack of shame. It is In the Quick by Kate Hope Day. Um, and how often do you see um, a space book with a pink cover? Yeah, not so very I do often. I kind of love that. Um, and that has some... Uh, tie into the content of the book. But so when I was um, reading about this book before I started it, 
it was um, described in a couple of places as like the Martian crossed with Jane Eyre, which I was oh. like, well, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Um, and that really is very accurate. Like it is kind of a Jane Eyre retelling around the theme of, um, of space. Um, so our main character is June. Um, she is uh, brilliant, but difficult in the way that brilliant people often are. Um, she was orphaned as a young child and raised by her uncle, who is a scientist with the space program. Um, and all of this is very like, it's the space program. We are currently like sending rockets into space and exploring other planets. Um, and that's all just a given. So we don't know really like what the year is and if this is like an alternate timeline it just these are the facts on the ground like there is space exploration happening and here we go so her uncle is a scientist um, with the space program and is uh, very involved with um, a manned space mission that goes out um, and contact is lost with the ship and they are presumed to be dead, this whole crew in their ship. Um, so, and soon after that happens, her uncle dies. Um, so June becomes kind of obsessed with this lost mission um, and um, she doesn't get along so well with her aunt um, who is remaining to raise her and ends up getting kind of like, unceremoniously booted off early to the like boarding school associated with uh, the space program. So she goes to space boarding school, basically. Um, and there, you know, she um, studies and learns to be an astronaut and does all of these things. And eventually, with the goal of um, becoming an astronaut herself, and trying to find this lost ship, she becomes just obsessed with them and convinced that they're still alive out there and that she can find them and figure out what went wrong with their ship and bring them home. So that's sort of the, the background. And then you have kind of the beats of Jane Eyre laid over top of it, which is a really interesting experience because Jane Eyre is about as far from the space program as I yeah. thought you could get. Yeah. Um, but I would actually be interested um, to compare this one to um, The Wife Upstairs. Yeah, I was just the thinking other, of that one. Yeah, yeah, the other sort of Jane Eyre retelling and see, you know, how successful they both were. Um, so there is science in the book and there is space in the book, but I would say it's kind of incidental in a lot of ways. Like you don't have to be into science fiction to appreciate this book. It's just kind of the, the window dressing. Well, no, that's not quite right because that makes it seem like it doesn't matter. So like everything is um, integral to the plot. Like it's not just tossed in there, um, but you can appreciate, I think the plot and the, the arc of it without needing to be super invested in like astronauts and rockets. <laughs> okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I liked it. It's also a short book. It's a quick read. Um, and I, I would recommend it. If you're not usually into science fiction, this would be a good one to maybe test the waters because it's not super science fiction-y. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So um, we would love for you all to let us know what you were reading. Um, if you've read any of these books, what you thought, um, or how else you were filling up your summer reading time. Um, we also wanted to just take a moment. So we will be coming back in September, um, hopefully with our twice a month book breaks. Um, but we know a lot of you don't necessarily watch us live when this posts on Wednesday afternoons. Um, so if there is another time or day or 
like time of day evenings are better or whatever that would be um, more convenient to you and you would be more likely to join us live, we would love to hear from you and know what that is um, because it's so much fun when we get to actually interact with you all in real time um, during the post. So let us know your thoughts on that. I still have a, a dream of having like a, 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 a TV set. So, you know, help me with my dream people. We have a green screen, just saying. I know. <laughs> so we may be making some changes um, when it comes to the fall um, after we've had this little bit of a break. So let us know what you'd like to see, uh, when you'd like to see it, and maybe we can um, make some changes that would be beneficial to everyone. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you for joining us. And again, let us know what you're reading and what your thoughts are in the comments. And we will look forward to seeing you in September. Yep. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Yes, very much. All right. Thanks, everyone.